In this video, we will walk through the basic steps required to automate and silently install Adobe Acrobat Reader DC. It is recommended that you have the following applications installed prior to following along with this tutorial. A file extraction utility such as 7-Zip and an MSI editor such as Orca or InstEd. First, we will search Google for the Adobe Reader Enterprise installation file. Select the Adobe Acrobat Reader DC distribution link. From this page, we will select the appropriate operating system, language, and version. At the time of this recording, the version number is 2018.011.20040. And then we will click Download Now. We will save the executable to our hard drive. Once the download has completed, we will navigate to the downloads directory to view the executable. At this point, I make a habit of removing the zone identifier alternate data stream, which indicates that the file was downloaded from the internet. The reason for this is to prevent possible issues with the executable getting blocked when attempting to install the application in a silent or unattended fashion. There are several ways to accomplish this, however, the easiest is simply to right-click on the executable, select Properties, and select the box next to Unblock. Click Apply, click OK. Next, we want to figure out what the possible command line switches are for this executable. One method I will frequently try first is to add a space forward slash question mark and then hit enter. So I'll open a command prompt, enter the executable name space forward slash question mark and hit enter. After the files are extracted we can see that it presents us with the possible command line switches for setup. I can see that by running the slash s all switch we should be able to install adobe reader dc silently and the slash rs switch will suppress the reboot so let's give that command a try i can see that the executable has kicked off and that MSI exec has also spawned. So I know that the installer is running. Everything appears to have installed as expected. I see the start menu entry, the desktop shortcut, the installation directory, and add remove programs. However, when we launch the application for the first time, it is prompting us to accept the EULA or End User License Agreement. For a one-off install, this is not a huge concern. However, when we are in an enterprise environment, deploying this across hundreds or even thousands of devices, we probably want to suppress this so that every end user does not have to accept it each time Adobe Reader is installed or upgraded. We want to give our internal customers a seamless experience whenever possible. Looking at the command line options we found earlier, we can see a slash MSI switch that allows us to pass parameters to the MSI exec. Now you are probably asking, 
how do I determine what parameters I can pass to the MSI exec? To find this out, we will want to take the original executable and extract the files, including the MSI. The easiest method to accomplish this is to use 7-zip or a similar file extraction utility. We will right-click on the executable, select 7-zip, and extract to. Now we can see all the files have been extracted. Another option for extraction is from the command line. The dash sfx underscore o specifies the name of the folder where the expanded package is placed. The folder name should be enclosed in quotation marks, and it is best if you do not use an existing folder. The dash sfx underscore ne is the switch used to extract the installer's contents. Again, we can see the extracted files, including the MSI, the MSP patch, the setup.exe, CAB file, and two INI files, which include configuration settings. I'm using a program called InstaEd, which is a free MSI editor similar to Orca for those of you familiar with that product. We will right-click on the acroread.msi and select InstaEdit. This will open the MSI and allow us to view the table that will give us the property option to accept the EULA. If we scroll down to the property table, sort the properties alphabetically, and then scroll down and look for EULA underscore accept. Notice that it is set to no by default. We want to change this to yes. Now that we have identified the EULA underscore accept property, we can add it to the slash MSI switch mentioned earlier. I also recommend generating a log file whenever possible to assist with troubleshooting errors and failures. To create a log file for this particular installer, we will pass another parameter to the slash MSI switch. To see the default MSI switches available, we can simply type msiexec.exe in the command line. If we scroll down, we can see the various logging options listed. I typically use slash L asterisk V followed by the path to the log file we would like to generate. In this example, I will use C Windows Logs Adobe Reader install.log. Now that the installation has completed, we can verify that the log file was generated. And if we scroll to the bottom of the log, we can see that the installation completed successfully. Now when we open Adobe Reader for the first time, we are no longer asked to accept the EULA. Another installation option is to run the setup.exe from within the extracted files we downloaded earlier using the same command line switches. We can also add the command line switches directly to the setup.ini file and then simply call the setup.exe. 
this is the method I prefer and use. So I'm going to open the setup.ini file. Under the startup section, I'm going to add the cmd line equals followed by the command line parameters I want to execute. I'm going to save that, close the file, open the command prompt again, and just type in setup.exe with no additional command line parameters and hit enter. Again, I can see that the setup.exe and MSI exec processes are running. For those who would like to install Adobe Reader using the MSI directly, we will need to take care of a few additional steps to get things working properly. Let's see what happens if we run the command to install the MSI by itself. You will notice that it does not accept the EULA. It also does not apply the patch. As you can see, it is running version 2015 instead of 2018. The reason for this is that the MSI reads the configuration from the abcpy.ini instead of the setup.ini. We can add the EULA underscore accept equals yes line to the abcpy.ini file to suppress the EULA. So under the OEM installation options, we will add the EULA underscore accept equals yes line. Save that. Close. To apply the patch at the same time, we must add the patch switch to the command line we are running in our batch file. The EULA is suppressed, and we are running the fully patched version. In this video, we discovered multiple ways to automate the Adobe Reader DC install and run it silently. I hope this video has been helpful, and thank you for watching.